Allah Azza wa Jal, more than 1400 years ago, revealed the Qur'an as a source of guidance for mankind. And with this book, Allah Azza wa Jal sent a messenger who was given the task of not only conveying these ayat, these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an, but was also given the task of conveying the meanings and clarifying to the ummah and demonstrating to the ummah how this Qur'an should be implemented in one's life. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Qur'an, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ that we have sent down to you the remembrance, the dhikr, so that you may explain and clarify to the people that which we have sent down. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Inna anzalna ilayka al kitab, ilayka al kitab bil haqq musaddiqan lima, musaddiqan lima bayna yadayh that we have sent down to you the book with truth so that مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ that which clarifies or assures that that which is between you meaning the previous scriptures that they are truthful that they are revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ لِتَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ That we have sent down to you the book with truth so that you may judge between the people. And so we see in these ayat that the Prophet ﷺ was not only given the task of conveying the ayat, was not only given the task of giving this book the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this ummah, but was also given the task of clarifying, making clear, and demonstrating to the ummah that which Allah Azza wa Jal has re- revealed. And that is why Aisha radiallahu anha also describes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an that the mannerisms, the akhlaq of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the Qur'an. Meaning what? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the way that he dealt with people, the way that he acted during his lifetime, it was an enactment of the Qur'an. It was a demonstration of how the Qur'an should be implemented in one's life. And that is why we find many other narrations from the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een that they describe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as someone who enacted the Qur'an and someone who was a walking Qur'an. And... Furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an commands the believers, those with iman, to obey not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a direct refutation against those who claim that the Qur'an is sufficient for us, that we are not in need of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The so-called Qur'aniyun, or those who claim that the Qur'an is sufficient and we do not require the sunnah in order to be guided upon the straight path. And so we see dozens of ayat in the Qur'an wherein Allah Azza wa Jal directly and explicitly commands the believers to obey the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasul وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ That, O oh, you who believe, O oh, those of you with iman, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those with authority. فَإِن تَنَازَعَتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ That if you differ amongst yourselves, then return back to what? Return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and return back to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will find the answers for your disputes, for your differences in not only the Qur'an, but also the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
We see that over the centuries, the enemies of Islam have always tried to attack the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of the ways they did this was by attacking the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And unfortunately, some of these doubts, some of these shubuhat, some of these misconceptions have even crept into the minds of some Muslims. And therefore it is important to understand how the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was preserved. How Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala through, through His divine ability was able to preserve the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for this ummah. In order for the ummah to be guided through the Qur'an right until the day of Qiyamah. And so some of the shubuhat or some of the doubts that these enemies of Islam come with is that the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not properly preserved. Or that the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not recorded until later on or much later, uh, much after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if we understand some of the contributing factors when it comes to the preservation of the sunnah, many of these doubts and many of these shubuhat can be clarified. And inshallah in today's khutbah, we will mention just a few of these factors that contributed to the preservation of the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And specifically we will try and focus on the lifetime of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself and the lifetime of the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in. One of the important factors that contributed to the preservation of the Sunnah is the unique ability that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given when it came to his speech, when it came to the way in which he spoke, and the fact that he was able to convey a large amount of meaning with a few words. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ is described as being Jawami'ul Kalim. Someone who was able to convey a lot of meaning, but at the same time he was able to do that with only a few words. And furthermore, the Prophet ﷺ spoke in a manner, spoke in a way where the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een were able to absorb and also act upon the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during his lifetime. And so, for example, we find Anas radiallahu an in a famous narration from him. He describes the speech of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that كان إذا تكلم بكلمة أعادها ثلاثا حتى تفهم منه. That Anas radiallahu anhu describes the speech of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says that whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke, he would repeat his speech thrice. He would repeat his speech until his speech would be understood by those around him. Until the Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een were able to understand and were able to absorb his speech. And this was the unique ability of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and one, was one of the contributing factors when it came to the preservation of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And through this ability of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Sahaba, they gained a humongous amount of knowledge during the lifetime of the Sahaba, uh, during the lifetime of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, such that they were able to properly convey it after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another point to mention with regards to the era and the lifetime of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the way in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ensured that the Sahaba correctly and accurately memorized the speech of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the fact that he did not allow the Sahaba to memorize something incorrectly in front of him. And the fact that he would correct them if they made a mistake when it came to their memory or their understanding or their memorization 
of the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. An example of this, we find from the narration of Al Bara ibn Azib radiallahu an. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it was his habit that he would teach the Sahaba certain ad'iyah or certain remembrances that are generally often repeated during the day and during the night time. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this incident was teaching Al-Bara ibn Azib radiallahu an the dua upon sleeping, the dua upon going to bed and getting ready and prepared to sleep. And so in this dua, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions within the dua that آمَنْتُ بِكِتَابِكَ الَّذِي أَنزَلْتْ وَبِنَبِيِّكَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلْتْ That I bring iman in you, in the book that you have revealed, in the book that you have sent down, and in the Nabi or in the Prophet that you have sent. And so Al-Bara ibn Azib at this young age, he was young at the time, he repeated this dua in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and instead of saying آمَنْتُ بِكِتَابِكَ الَّذِي أَنزَلْتْ وَبِنَبِيِّكَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلْتْ He replaced Nabi with the word Rasul. Now we might think that, you know, changing the word from Nabi to Rasul, this is a trivial matter. They both are correct in terms of, of their meanings. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ensured that Al-Bara ibn Azib radiallahu an memorized this dua correctly and he corrected him and he said wabi nabiyyika alladhi arsalt and not wabi rasulika alladhi arsalt and th- this is just one example of the many examples during the lifetime of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam where he corrected the sahaba when it came to their understanding and their memorization of the words of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he give us the tawfiq and the understanding to act upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make us from those who will enter Jannah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who will drink from the fountain of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will end off the khutbah by mentioning a few of the factors, a few more of the factors during the lifetime of the Sahaba that contributed to the preservation of the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We must understand that the Qur'an was revealed in stages. The Prophet ﷺ became a Nabi upon the revelation of Surah Al-Alaq or the opening verses of Surah Al-Alaq. And during the course of the 23 years of the messengerhood of the Prophet ﷺ, he received ayat upon different instances or different occasions that perhaps answered some questions or clarified some incidents during the lifetime of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so, for example, we find in the Quran, "Yes, alunaka anil khamri wal maisir." They ask you about uh, they ask you about alcohol and gambling. "Wa yes, alunaka anil mahid," and they ask you about uh, the the woman who is menstruating. "Wa yes, alunaka anil yatama." And they ask you about the orphans and so on and so forth. So we see many of the ayat came upon the questioning of, of some of the Sahaba. Or they came upon a particular incident. And so we see the divine wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he sent upon this ummah, upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his ayat, the Qur'an, over a period of 23 years. Such that the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een were not only able to memorize these ayat, but then were able to understand these ayat, gain clarification from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to these ayat, and then act upon these ayat in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that if anything needed to be clarified, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was there, was able to correct them, and was able to receive revelation directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to that matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with regards to the speech of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah azza wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Najm, وَمَا يَنطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ That he does not utter a single word, 
except through revelation. Or he does not utter a single word through his own desires. But rather, in huwa illa wahyun yuha. That he receives revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any word that he utters, then it is through the guidance and through the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also see a quality amongst the Quraysh during the lifetime of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was the quality of truthfulness, the quality of sidq. And this was a quality that was praiseworthy even amongst the kuffar of Quraysh, even amongst the disbelievers of Quraysh. And the opposite, being a cheat, lying, was something that was looked down upon, was something that was frowned upon even by those who did not believe in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even by those who did not believe in the words that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying. Such was the you know, quality of the Quraysh that we see an incident, an interesting incident, where Abu Sufyan radiallahu an, one of the companions who at this time was not yet a believer, he, as would be the custom, he went to, uh, you know, Asham. They would have a rihlat al-shita and a rihlat al-sayf. They would go to different lands during the summer months and during the winter months in order to trade. In this particular incident, Abu Sufyan radiallahu an, he traveled to a room and he met with the king of a room, Hiraql. And he was asked certain questions about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was asked questions such as, what is the status of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speak the truth? Is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam known to be trustworthy? And so on and so forth. And so Abu Sufyan, interestingly, in this incident, replies to the king of Arum with the truth. He's not able to lie. He's not able to tarnish the image of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we see that later on, Abu Sufyan radiallahu an, he narrates that, Wallahi lawla al-haya min an ya'thiru alayya kathiban la kathibtu alayh. That, Wallahi, by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if, you, if it were not for the fact that I was shy of a lie being attributed to me, I would have lied against the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So even though we see in this incident that Abu Sufyan radiallahu an, being an enemy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at this time, was not able to tarnish the image of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was something that was prevalent in the society of the Quraysh, that truthfulness was something that was praiseworthy and lying was something that was looked down upon and frowned upon by the, the, the society at large. I will end off with an ayah of the Qur'an and this is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah uh, in the beginning or the opening verses of Surah Al-Baqarah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the mu'mineen. Allah azza wa jal says, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ That those who bring iman in the ghayb, in the unseen, and they establish the salah, and they spend that which they have been given in rizq. And so we see in this verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascribes iman to the one who brings iman in the unseen. There are matters which we are required to bring iman even though we may not be able to see that in front of us. Even though we, may, we might not have an explicit ex, uh, proof. Or even though Allah Azza wa Jal has not, not showed that particular thing in front of our eyes. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the signs of the day of Qiyamah. That when the signs of the day of Qiyamah appear in front of the people and then the people claim that they have now brought Iman this Iman will not benefit them in any way that 
their iman will not benefit them if they have not brought iman before these clear signs have come in front of them. And so my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, with regards to our iman, it is important to understand that there will be certain parts of our iman which are unseen to us. We do not see with our own eyes the day of Qiyamah. We are not able to see in this life, in this dunya, our Lord. Yet we are expected to bring Iman in these things. Yet we are expected to bring Iman in the unseen, in the ghaib. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows signs to these, uh, to these people, to those who bring Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show these signs to those who are truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those who are truthful in seeking the truth. And so this is an important matter to understand that whenever we are faced with a confusion, a doubt, a shubha, then we always remember the ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the believers, those with iman, that they bring iman in the ghayb. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he give us the tawfiq and understanding to act upon the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protect us from bid'ah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protect us from innovation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protect us from sin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protect us from fisk. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protect us from disbelief.